Are you at the lake? That night, I was at the lake. No one ever came here at night, and as such, it was the perfect place to say my goodbyes. <laughs> of all the places to do it. I'm such a miserable prat. This was the same lake where we had our first date, and we'd come here a few times since then as well. It was a dick move, but this was ultimately the deciding factor when it came to choosing a setting for my final farewell. Pop it. The clouds drifted across the sky, the moon peeking out from behind them. At last, the moon was full. As I waited to see the moon, the knot deepened, and before I knew it, it was midnight. In the end, getting my memories back didn't change a damn thing about me. Cowardly, mistrustful, spineless, and arrogant. That was me in a nutshell. Without my memories, I wandered around aimlessly, entrusting myself to the various women who came into my life. Why women in particular? Admittedly, something about them made them easier to be around, but more than that, I think I just wanted to be loved. Loved and needed. It was something I had never gotten to experience. And somewhere deep down, I yearned to find someone who would sincerely love and need me. But in the end, it never lasted long. I'd quickly discover some annoying trait they had. Then I'd find a sharp object, erase the memories, and find a different girlfriend. Ironic, isn't it? Every time I erased something, I left a new permanent mark. I knew cutting myself wasn't going to end my life. But once I forgot my time with them, I wouldn't feel the need to. You use this impossible demand as an excuse to reject all forms of love. Yeah, that's right. I tested them. All to make them prove that they would go out of their way for me. And whenever they failed, I would erase my memories and disappear. How unbelievably arrogant of me. I claimed to want love, and yet I rejected it in all its forms. Ultimately, no one ever fulfilled my impossible request. But even then, I still felt I was happier without my memories. No painful emotions. No problems or worries. Without my memories, my smile was genuine. Or so I thought. Until I met her. Eureka Arasu was the first girl I ever approached of my own volition. I was visiting that cafe with my girlfriend at the time, but even then, Eureka's radiant smile stole my heart. Straight away, I was captivated by her beauty. None of the girls from my past could hold a candle to her sparkle. Blimey, you're one fit bird. Will you go out with me? Looking back, I probably wouldn't have had the courage to ask her out on the spot if I'd still had my memories. But even after we got together, I kept my amnesia a secret. After all, what did I stand to gain by coming clean? Again and again, I quickly found that my lack of memories was an asset to me. The myriad scars on my wrist were proof of that. And if I was better off with amnesia, then there was no reason to cure it. I chose to respect the choice that the old me had made. You lost your memories on purpose, didn't you? Any time a problem occurred, I would just wear my smile like a mask and coast through it. No one ever figured me out. Except for Eureka Arasu, that is. She saw through me like I was made of glass. They say never underestimate a woman's intuition, but hers was something else. When she said she wanted me to get my memories back, I was terrified. I wanted to stop her, but I couldn't. That was one thing that remained consistent about me, whether I had my memories or not. 
No matter how much I hurt myself, I could never find the courage to die. I kept telling myself I would be better off dead, and yet I couldn't pull the trigger. What a weak little worm. After I got my memories back, I took off my new clothes and changed back into my usual heavenly robes. Oh, heavenly! As I was folding them up, I thought about the conversation I'd had with Cinderella and Snow White. Apparently they'd caught on to my not-so-secret feelings. As with her, I owed them a lot. But once I changed back, those feelings vanished. Uh, Alice is like, well, I need to have my chat with you. It's the appointed hour. You're going back to the moon now? Yeah. I was never meant to stay on this planet as long as I have. I need to go back now. You know she'll do everything in her power to stop you, right? It won't work. Even if she locked me in a tower and donned a set of armor, She'd never prevail against the Moon Dwellers. Probably not, no. Moon Dwellers are on a whole different level from Earthlings, after all. I do wish I could have had a little more time with her, but... You can't always get what you want. You can't always get what you want. Funny. I thought you hated taking orders from people. You sure you want to go to the moon? Yeah. I haven't got a choice. Alright then. I guess that's that. Hey, Kaguya. Have you ever given any thought as to why you were born here on this tainted earth? If your purpose here is to atone for your sins, then what do you suppose those sins are? Well... Contemplated how to get to the moon. Hang myself. Jump off a roof. Jump off a bridge. Carbon monoxide poisoning. Overdose on pills. Light myself on fire. Freeze to death. Electrocute myself. <sighs> the options were limitless. However, I wanted a quiet death that wouldn't inconvenience anyone. Ultimately, I decided to take advantage of the lake's surface. You see, the reflection of the moon on the water looked almost like a staircase made of light. If I swam out that far, surely I could make it to the moon. I swallowed a few of the anti-anxiety pills I kept hidden on me. Okay. That way I'd be too doped up to change my mind part way through. I closed my eyes and imagined a world full of light. The moon was home to beautiful, opulent people who never grew old and never had any problems. It was truly the perfect utopia. I felt the light against my eyelids and opened them a tiny fraction. There, I saw someone riding down to me on a cloud. I've come to collect you, Moon Prince. Was this voice merely a hallucination, or... I didn't have a choice. My only option was to obey. Not much different from Earth, then, is it? As I stared blankly up at the night sky, I thought of her. Farewell, Pulpit. Run, girl, run! I nearly overlooked it. The secret message at the end of his letter. Which was? Ooh, nicely caught. Puppet. You wanted to know how I feel now that I've made memories with you. And the answer is clear. Puppet. No, forget the silly pet name. I love you, Eureka. And the more I love you, the more I want you. I find myself wishing you'd give your love and attention and kindness only to me. 
I don't want any of it to go to someone else. When I'm with you, I feel myself getting more and more needy. I don't want to treat you as an object, and yet I so desperately want to tell them you belong to me. Eureka, the reason I've confessed my love to you, the reason I've chose to date you, is because I love you and want to be with you. I need you, and you need me back, Eureka. That's why we're together. Eureka, as I don my heavenly robes and prepare to bid you farewell, I find my heart aching for you. It's a good thing this girl has intuition as to where the guy is going to do the deed. <laughs> Glad it would be like, how do you get from that that he's going to the lake? I guess she thought of like, what was an important memory or place to the two of them? And so the lake is a, a reasonable assumption to make. If he's like, I'm going to be thinking of you as I go to the moon. <sighs> when I arrived at the lake, I saw Kaguya wading out into it. The moon's reflection rippled as I ran out into the dark water. Poppet? What are you doing here? Kaguya froze like he was too startled to process what he was seeing. You never do take me into consideration, do you? For him, the water only came up to his knees, but for me it came right up to my thighs. Yeah, short women. <laughs> if he waited out any further, things were bound to get complicated. Poppet? Gah. I grabbed him by the collar and slapped him across the face. Good. Gah. My palm stung. And for the first time, I realized that hitting someone meant both people would get hurt. Glaring sharply, I shoved myself away from him. Don't underestimate Detective Eureka. I see right through you, and I know exactly what you're thinking. I knew you would choose to drown yourself here. You love the moon, and this place has a great view of it. Plus, you were probably navel-gazing about the moonlight or whatever, right? I spoke quietly. At any other time of day, I could have seen his face, but unfortunately the moonlight wasn't enough. You want to go to the moon. Why dress it up in poetry when you can just say you want to die? I wanted to provoke him. I wanted him to fight back. Why? Because it was a thousand times better than letting him bottle himself up behind a smile. Is that all you wanted to say? Nope. Tell me, Kaguya. Do you know what this is? I held up the item in my hand, wrapped carefully in cloth. As soon as he caught sight of it, his eyes widened. Of course I... That's... Oh... Oh, 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 I see what's going on here. It's not the exchange diary. Oh. Oh, the challenge. The impossible task. How far is this girl willing to show that she wants his love? How much will she sacrifice? Yes. Oh gosh, we're going to stab ourselves, aren't we? That's why we brought a knife. Just thinking of that meme. What What do you have in your hand? A knife! Alright, knife it is. It's a kitchen knife. I brought it with me from the cafe. Cuts really well, you know. We sharpen it every day. I can prove it's real, too. I pressed the blade to my wrist and slid it from thumb to pinky without a moment of hesitation. Yeah, I knew you were going to do that. <sighs> I hadn't been pushing down very hard, but nevertheless, the piercing pain made me grit my teeth. A thin line of blood gleamed beneath the moonlight. See? It's real. I smiled at him to hide my pain. A challenging smile. What are you doing with that? His voice wavered as his expression stiffened. Are you going to kill me? 
No, of course not. I looked directly into his eyes and continued. I read your letter. And now that I understand your past, now that I understand your feelings, I want to say this again. I want to heal you, Kaguya. But it will take more than a roof over your head to clear away the darkness in your heart. No surprise there, of course. After all, I wasn't there for you during the hardest parts of your life. Talk is cheap, am I right? It would be all too easy to lie to you. From your perspective, everything I say probably sounds like total BS. So I get it. I won't earn your trust with words. Instead, I'll prove to you that I love you with my actions. Uh, I knew she was going to do this! Holding the knife in both hands, I raise it high into the air. I mean, this is the proof. This is the proof he wanted. He wanted proof that someone loved him that much. I can't believe we're doing this. This is crazy. But I know this is the right thing to do, and this is crazy to me. Oh, all right, everyone, hold my hand. Here we go. Ah! And plunged it into my belly. I felt flecks of something warm splatter across my face. It was my own blood. The impact to my stomach sent me stumbling backward a few steps. The stab wound burned like it was on fire. I could feel sweat beating on my forehead. This intense pain was like nothing I'd ever felt before. Desperately, I struggled to stay on my feet. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I could hear Kaguya screaming. I made this choice for myself, and yet tears welled in my eyes and my heart pounded uncontrollably. Pulpit! Pulpit! Stay away! I caught sight of him approaching and shouted at the top of my lungs. Why? Enduring the mind-numbing pain, I looked up and glared at him as he stood there in shock. Why do you think? I'm taking you up on your challenge. Obviously. I wheezed out an answer. The pain was unbearable. But even then, it was still preferable to the pain of rejection. Mm, I don't know about that one. I pulled my shaking hands away from the knife handle, leaving it suspended in my belly. That's probably good. And she's cracked again. <laughs> Pulpit. Out of nowhere, I started laughing. The sight of a knife in my stomach was just so surreal, I couldn't help but wonder if maybe I was dreaming. Or had I simply lost my mind? No, I hadn't. I was completely sane. Which was precisely why I had made this choice. You're fulfilling your role of that fifth suitor that died in the attempt. I fell silent, then turned to the, mo to the man illuminated by the moonlight. To be clear, this isn't a suicide attempt. I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing this for you. For me? Yes. This is the biggest sacrifice I can make for you. I would die for you, Kaguya. And I'm going to. Despite the depth of my wound, it didn't seem to be fatal because I still had physical and mental stamina in spades. All this pain and it still isn't enough? The human body is such an enigma. <sighs> I yanked the knife out to get ready for round two, and a fountain of blood came gushing out like so many tears. Pulpit! Uh, uh. As I removed the foreign object from my body, I expected it to be painful, but instead it just felt... sickening. Calmly, I imagined what the stain must look like on my white dress. Then I raised the knife again. Stop! That's enough! Please! Screaming, Kaguya grabbed me by the arm. What are you thinking, you idiot? 
Don't you know how much it hurts me to see you in pain? Don't you realize how much I love you? How much you mean to me? Seeing you in pain hurts me a thousand times worse than any pain I give myself. Worse than cutting. Worse than burning. Worse than suffocating. It's agony! If you care about me as much as you say you do, then don't hurt me like this. If you love me, then never do this again! If something happened to you, I'd be devastated. I'd never recover. Now please, just stop! I'm begging you! Sobbing, he pulled me into his arms. I believe you, okay? I believe that you love me. So please don't hurt yourself, Eureka. <laughs> I heard a soft splash as something fell into the water near me. Apparently I'd lost my grip on the knife. Guess I'm not gonna die after all. How about you take your own advice then? Eureka. Tell me, Kaguya. Can you feel my pain? Yeah. You can? Trust me, I feel it. And it hurts. A smile crept up on my lips. I closed my eyes and a single tear rolled down my cheek. By all accounts, I was in agonizing pain, but strangely enough, my heart was at peace. Then Kaguya stepped away from me, and for once he wasn't smiling. Right, the hospital! We've got to get you to a doctor! I'll take you there straight away! Just hold tight, alright? Alright? Hang in there! He scooped me into his arms and headed for the lakeshore. Hurry. Hurry. Hurry! <sighs> when we made it back to the shore, he lowered me to the ground. Then he pulled off part of his kimono and wrapped the cloth around my wound. Sorry, but this is all I have. Just press down here and stay still. <laughs> I grunted in pain, and the next thing I knew, Kaguya's face filled my vision. He pulled his lips away, then wiped mine with his thumb. Sorry. I don't know if there's any medicine left on my tongue. And even if there was, sedatives don't have any pain-relieving effects. But I figured it couldn't hurt to try. All it did was make me more flustered. If I had some kind of cure-all, I'd have used it in a heartbeat. But that's just fairy tale stuff, that is. Your kimono will get stained. That's what they're there for. <laughs> nice. Here, take this. Hey, I recognize this. It's the handkerchief you gave me. You held on to it all this time? Yeah. It was the one thing I could never bring myself to return. He scooped me back into his arms and started running. Oh my goodness. This is a pretty intense finale, I gotta say. <laughs> if anyone had seen us soaking wet and covered in blood, they might have had a heart attack. But there was no residential districts in this area, just summer homes. Plus it was the middle of the night. Unfortunately, the utter lack of people was only adding to Kaguya's current panic. <sighs> At one point, his face twisted in pain and he slowed to a walk. Kaguya? <sighs> Shoulders heaving, he struggled again and again to keep his tired eyes open. But it was a losing battle, and a split second later we both pitched sideways. Go. Thankfully, he caught himself at the last possible moment. I'm sorry. Eureka, are you alright? He straightened back up. But the pain still lingered in his expression. He was gritting his teeth, like he was bracing himself against something. 
I could see a tiny rivulet of blood trickling from one corner of his mouth. That's when I realized he was fighting to stay conscious. Oh no. Had those aforementioned sedatives started to take effect? Oh no! <sighs> Sorry, Poppet. Just a moment. Where's a wizard when you need him? He set me down at the base of a tree nearby. Kaguya. Now I could see that my blood had left a stain on his kimono. As for me, I could still just barely formulate cohesive thoughts, but the intense pain and blood loss was making me feel faint, same as him. I pulled the cloth away from my stomach and found that the bleeding had slowed considerably. Hang on. A minute. He smiled, probably to reassure me, and picked up a fallen branch lying on the ground. What's that for? This ought to do the trick. Ah. Right, because he last time his head felt fuzzy, he cut himself, and so this time he's, uh... Can you actually put a tree branch, like a branch, hard enough into your thigh? I guess if it's pointy enough. Ouch! Gripping the branch, he raised it into the air and plunged it hard into his thigh. I guess there really was no better place to put that. Go! Kaguya! Why? I reached out to him, but lost my balance and toppled face first onto the ground. He hoisted me upright, then smiled and spoke softly. I'm sorry, Yurika. Just a minute ago, I was telling you not to hurt yourself, and now I've made a hypocrite of myself. But I needed to do it, or else I'll pass out altogether. The branch had impaled his thigh. Blood trickled from the wound. It was so gruesome, I couldn't help but grimace. Just understand this. I didn't do it to kill myself. I did it to keep us both alive. As he spoke, he put his arms under me and staggered to his feet. <sighs> he stumbled dozens of times, possibly from the pain, but nevertheless pushed forward. My whole life. I always yearned for the moon. The world was overflowing with things I didn't want to see or hear. I was subjected to so much of its corruption right from the moment I was born. There was no light in my life. What did I ever do wrong? What was I missing? Nobody wanted me. Nobody needed me. Nobody loved me. That's why I was drawn to the purity of the moon. I wanted to go back. I wanted to believe I wasn't some tainted human. No, I was different. I was a moon dweller, and the people up there needed me. But the truth is, I figured it out a long time ago. I was never a moon dweller. I was a dirty, greedy human, same as the rest of them. Just a normal human who lies, hurts people, and wants what he can't have. Same as you. Yep. I'm an Earthling just like you. Yeah. We're both human. Sure. Moon dwellers are beautiful, opulent people who never grow old and never have any problems. But the reason they don't have problems is because they've forgotten everything. I don't want to forget the love I have for you, or the time we shared. If that's what the moon's like, then I don't want to go back. And I'm not letting you go either. My talons will claw out the eyes of those who come to take you. I'll seize them by the hair, whirl them around and dash them to the ground. That'll teach them. Hang in there, Eureka. I promise I'll save you. Thank you. I rested my head on his shoulder and wrapped my arms around his neck. It hurt to see my beloved in pain. But it would hurt a thousand times worse if he left me here alone. The good news is, he's not going to abandon me for the moon. Nor will I abandon him. Even after our sins are purged, we're going to spend the rest of our lives here, on Earth. 
You're almost to safety. Just a little longer. Okay. We encouraged each other as the walk continued. Hey, Kaguya? Do you understand why I wanted you to get your memories back? I looked up at him. Yeah. I'll do now. He looked back at me. You wanted me to realize that you loved me, didn't you? Yeah. My heart belongs to you alone. What back at you? If you'll give me your heart, then I'll give you mine. At long last, the city lights came into view on the horizon. I'll see the light! After all that time, walking through the darkness, any tiny speck of light felt blinding. The strength drained from my limbs, and I relinquished my grip on Kaguya. Yurika! Go! As I went limp, he lost his balance, and together we collapsed to the ground. <sighs> Yurika! The next thing I knew, my vision had gone hazy. Pulpit! Yurika! I thought I heard him calling my name, but I couldn't tell if it was real life or only a dream. Somehow I had the energy to use my brain, but not enough to move my body. Instantly, I was overcome with a deep, primal fear. If I closed my eyes, chances were good I'd never open them again. Kaguya! Yurika! 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 Through my hazy vision, I could make out Kaguya's tear-stained face, and the full moon floating behind him. How beautiful. Don't you die on me, Eureka. We went through a lot to make that boy realize that the impossible task could be fulfilled.